popular personalities in the evangelical world. Tonight is your night for a miracle. And one of the most controversial, and whether he's on his daily TV show. Someone has just been healed of cancer, stomach cancer. Receive the fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire on you in Jesus' mighty name. Or whether he's preaching at the live crusades that attract millions around the world, one thing is sure. Substance. Benny Hinn is never dull. Substance. The tumor fell to the platform. I mean, it fell to the platform. That's we saw it with something else, and it broke in pieces right. uh, as it hit the stage. But I believe certain demons have come into America through this new group of people coming in from Haiti and from all these countries, bringing their devils with them. Showman, salesman, businessman, Benny Hinn has built himself into a kind of one-man multinational religious conglomerate. It's estimated his ministry brings in more than $200 million a year, mostly based on his pledge that you will be healed if you have enough faith, and especially if you attend his crusades. Four years ago, we took our hidden cameras inside Benny Hinn's organization. Tonight, we'll tell you what's happened to him since. But our story isn't only about the man who promises miracles but also about a remarkable little girl who is looking for one. Step out of your sickness, step out of your disease, and come into the river. He calls them miracle crusades. And as always, Benny Hinn's appearance four years ago in Calgary was a finely tuned event. Cancer cannot stand in the presence of the Holy Ghost. Cancer is only a name, but there's a higher name than cancer. Jesus. It all builds towards the miracle healing that Hinn maintains is channeled from God through him. The healing everyone here is waiting for. Fire on you! Fire! What you see on TV are the lucky ones allowed up on stage. But we found out how those people who actually meet Benny Hinn are chosen. We interviewed a man who saw those miracle crusades firsthand as one of Pastor Benny's security detail. He agreed to talk with us if we disguised his identity. We called him Andrew. How do they pick the ones they want to go on stage at that point? They have staff members that go through and give them a quick, uh, quick interview. And they'll ask them, Can you, you know, what's wrong with you? Oh, I've had uh, rheumatoid arthritis of my left shoulder. I can't lift it. All of a sudden, can you lift your shoulder? Because if you can't lift your shoulder, you can't go on stage. According to Andrew, the screening system has one purpose, to keep the truly sick or disabled away from Benny Hinn. Those people are never near, allowed near the stage. In our original broadcast, viewers were captivated by a mother and daughter we met in the stands at the Calgary Crusade. Janice Brulat is a lifelong believer whose eight-year-old Grace couldn't walk because of a severe neuromuscular disorder. I said, you know, honey, we could stay up here because, you know what? I said, Jesus is up here. And she said, no, mommy. She said, I'd like to go down and see if Benny Hinn could pray for me. I said, are you sure? She said, yes, mommy. Hoping for their miracle, they tried to make their way towards the stage, but they were intercepted by Hinn screeners who ordered them to sit down. Grace and I moved over to the side. We sat and waited, and Grace asked me if... I could help her to try and walk and uh, that was kind of her faith in action and uh, so I picked her up and we tried walking back and forth and um, that was kind of a hard moment. We caught up with Janice and Grace as they fled from the arena their hopes of a miracle even a prayer from Pastor Benny now gone. I just kept saying if she healed, if she healed, and like there was such a big like rush, like yeah. And, uh, what can I say? You know, she just wanted to be free for it. That was almost four years ago. Grace Berlot is now eleven. 
She didn't get her miracle from Pastor Benny that night, and she still can't walk. But you'll see, she's not about to let that stop her. When I paint, I just, I'm in my own world. I just like doing artistic things. <laughs> um, I like doing scenery with us. It's um, my favorite thing to do because uh, our, our house has lots of windows so we can see outside, so I always get ideas. She's a budding artist, but that's not all. Mm. It's no wonder friends and family call her Amazing Grace. In addition to not being able to walk on her own, Grace still has stiff joints and weak muscles. She's got little mobility in her hands, but with a bit of help, she can play the piano. And not just any tune. This is Tchaikovsky. She said, Mommy, I like to take piano lessons. And I said, oh, I don't know, hon, because I was a little bit worried that she might be disappointed because her hands are such that they're not like our hands. Her fingers don't work like our fingers and her arms are ri her arm joints are rigid and so I just wasn't sure how it was going to work it works beautifully today Grace is at the Fernie Fellowship Baptist Church where she lives in Fernie British Columbia she's playing Swan Lake at the Sunday service and I was sitting listening to her and she played it so beautifully and she put her whole I guess say her whole body and her whole heart into it and it just epitomized who she was you know um, a little swan who was gray and seemingly ugly and not very popular with the flock and little ugly duckling developed into a beautiful white swan and was loved and accepted by everyone after that she plays the piano I stand in awe amazed at what she can do with so little mobility it's incredible Jesus light up the world shine upon us set us free from the truth you now bring us shine on me through her piano playing her music. Um, she's just developed, her character's developed, and she just is flourishing. I'm so proud of her, and I believe that it was a gift from God um, to make up for what she is lacking in her body.